Hello everyone and welcome to another Creative Design Team YouTube collaboration. This month we are all doing videos about layers. Layering covers a whole range of techniques but what I'm going to be focusing on today, as you can see by this bit of a mess in front of me, is using up some of my stash of these stitched frames. I don't know if you're like me but I keep all of these things. Quite often I just use this part of the stitch rectangle frame to frame out a card or to use as a photo frame but when I'm cutting them I usually cut more all in one go and then I keep them all for future use in a bag and I thought today I would show you a way that I've thought of creating and layering these up just a little bit in simple black and white format but of course you can do this in any sort of color format that you would like. Currently in the core catalog, we have stitched square frames and stitched rectangle frames. These are the stitched squares. In the past, we've had stitched hexagons and we've also had stitched circles, but any sort of die cut is going to work with the technique I'm gonna share with you today. I'm going to create a couple of cards with you today and I'm going to use this stitched rectangle frame. Now you can see that I've lined all of this up and adhered it with washi tape. So I'll run this through my die cutting machine and then you can see all of the sections that you get if you run things through like this in one pass. So here it is, all run through. Just take that away and then I'm going to pop all the pieces out. Now you can see that our thin cuts have these little circle things here ready for you to poke everything through so that if things don't fall out properly it's easy to remove that section of the thin cut and then you get the pieces in between as well so I'll pop all of these out and I'm going to keep this like this for now because we have some more cards to make with this. So you can see that you end up with all of these frames and a little piece in the middle. Now with this set, I, I want to mention, even though I'm not going to use this today, there are shaker window foams and acetate. So you can create window shaker cards with these pieces that come with the actual foam tape and acetate sheets. So that makes it really, really easy because it's all cut ready to size. But what I'm doing today is taking all of these pieces and I'm going to create a card. Now, now I've got my big stash over there and I've just cut a whole heap of new ones, but don't worry, I am going to use some of those items from my stash on this project. The first thing I'm going to do is adhere the outside rectangle. So I'm just gonna put this in my score pal and get my liquid glue and this will line it all up perfectly. Now I have two different versions of this to show you today, but of course you can use whichever colorway suits your needs and your preference and your style. This would look really, really cute as a, a rainbow card. So you can see by putting something that's fairly flimsy like this outside frame, inside a score pal or a stamping platform like a misty it makes it so easy to line everything up you don't need a lot of glue you don't want to especially with this aqua glue you don't want it to buckle at all so just a small amount helps and now that i've got that all started i'm going to take that away and then finish off and i'll speed this part up for you so you don't have to watch it all in real time but i'm going to just continue fitting all of these pieces back in together and this is like layering in and of itself So while the glue's adhering and setting properly to the card base, I'm going to do some stamping. So I'm using the Infor Bloom Card Making Workshop, this butterfly and You're the Best. And the set also comes with this fabulous film strip thin cut and also the butterfly has a thin cut as well. So I'm going to be layering up the butterflies. So I need to stamp three for each card that I'm doing. And this image stamps so beautifully. I love all of the details that are involved with this. It's a beautiful, beautiful butterfly stamp, probably my favorite one. So I'll stamp another panel like this, but before I 
do that, I am going to stamp the sentiment that I'm going to use. So when I'm stamping a sentiment with a straight line that I know that I'm going to cut into a strip, I always stamp them down the bottom edge of the paper and fairly close to me so I can line it up and get them fairly straight. So as I said, these have thin cuts or die cuts that go with them. So it's just a simple case of lining this up. And I always use a washi tape because once I've been using my die cutting machine for a little bit, the plates, the platforms do tend to warp a little bit. So I wanna make sure that's not gonna move. So I'm going to cut out six butterflies and trim these out as well. So here's my card panel all done. I love all the texture and the stitching on this and just using, it's like cutting a card panel, but using the jigsaw puzzle pieces to fill it all in to add the extra detail. I've also gone ahead and done one with black cardstock and I wanted to show you a little trick and you can see here I've used one of the stitched pieces that I've kept to put a white panel in there. If you're having trouble adhering this by putting the glue straight onto this piece, you can apply it directly to the card panel, just a thin bead, and that way you can get into the corners a little bit better. And it might be easier to do this. I actually found it easier to do it this way after I'd done this one. Sometimes my hands shake a little bit when I'm trying to do something like that, but this way I found a lot quicker. So I thought I would just show you the construction of putting that together. I have my butterflies done. I've put three of them together for the first card. I'll just show you quickly what I'm doing with that. So I've just run some liquid glue down the center of each butterfly and lined these up. You can keep these flat if you wanted to, this design of card that I'm doing. And if you're posting them and you don't wanna pay the additional postage in North America, I think there's additional postage if it's too thick. Here in Australia, as long as we don't go over a certain thickness, we're fine to post things that have a little bit more dimension to them. So I'm going to set those aside and then it's time to start building this card panel. So what I'm going to do now is bring in some of these additional rectangles. These were all left over from the 31 Days of Christmas event that we did in October last year. So I wanted to put them to use. So what I'm going to do is run a bead of glue all around this one and start layering these up one on top of each other. Now you can do it this way where you just line all of this up or if you prefer you can put the glue straight onto the piece and hold it in your hand and do it that way. I find sometimes when I'm layering the same object on top of each other, the same piece of paper on top of each other, it's actually easier to do it this way and then adhere it to the page or the project that I'm working on. And then I just need to put this layer on top. So this is adding a little bit of dimension. It's using up all my scrap pieces and I'm using liquid glue instead of a whole heap of foam tape for this. So that makes that layer stand up just enough. And I can keep going with that if I wanted to because I've got so many of these little rectangles left over. So this card panel has a black base with a white frame. This one has the white base and I'm going to bring in the black frame. So what I've done there is I've got, I think it's three white rectangles and I've put a black one on top. I didn't want to make you sit through watching me do all of that all over again. And then what I'm going to do is bring in my sentiment. So that's going to run across here and then I'm going to angle my butterfly off to the side here. So what I need to do with this is put some foam tape underneath these pieces because I've done that layered frame underneath.
So I've spanned, I haven't put any foam tape underneath this section here because the frame is going to support that. And then I'm just going to put some foam tape on the butterfly here. And just a little bit on the wing on this side. And the frame here gives the butterfly a place to rest and to make this just even a little bit more special you could leave this all flat and adhere it all together like a chipboard style piece but i quite like having the wings coming up just that little bit and then i'm going to repeat this for this black version of the card before i go i want to mention again that the creative design team's membership group is up and running and open for registration now it's available to register until the end of march i've got a graphic up here that shows everything that we have on offer there is so much already on offer there so if you register now you've got a couple months worth of classes, videos, challenges, tips, all sorts of things available, all waiting for you to go and look at right now. And we are all very excited about what's to come. We have everything planned out through basically until the rest of the year. So lots of offerings coming your way. If you'd like to subscribe, I will put a link below for you to click on and you can check it all out. And hopefully you'll consider joining us there soon. Here are the finished cards. I've added some black and white dots. I've just kept it to a minimal type arrangement of these. I just felt if I tried to put some up in this corner and spread some more out that it just Tracted from this focal point down in the corner. I can't decide if I like the black version or the white version better But I do like the clean graphic black and white look to these cards I haven't made black and white cards for a while So it was good to get back into making a project like this You can see all the layers with the butterflies coming up and framing with putting multiple stacks of the frame on top of each other and then using foam tape underneath the sentiment and the butterfly embellishment to make it all sit perfectly here. As I mentioned earlier, this is part of the Creative Design Team's YouTube collaboration hop for the month. So I will have a link below for the playlist. And next up is Katie. So make sure you check out her video that will be airing very soon. And if you haven't watched all the other videos please make sure to click on the playlist and go and check them all out there have been some gorgeous projects that have been shared so far so you really don't want to miss out on that thank you so much for watching today happy crafting and bye for now